Let me uh, again uh, acknowledge our presiding officer, uh, a living legend in California politics, Senator Dills. Thank you for starting our session again this morning. Uh, it's my uh, initial duty to introduce some distinguished visitors, and so if I may uh, start with uh, a uh, jurist that many know of uh, great intellect, uh, a, uh, Associate Justice of the California Supreme Court, who will be swearing in our new pro tem in a moment, Stanley Mosk. <laughs> Uh, the uh, former uh, speaker of the assembly and a uh, uh, person we labored with for many, many uh, years, now mayor of San Francisco, Willie Brown, Jr. <laughs> also a uh, gentleman that distinguished himself in the state assembly for many years, uh, then served as the state's controller, Ken Corey. Uh, we're uh, pleased to have a number of former colleagues that have returned uh, today, and so um, I think it's appropriate to applaud for these people, even though there's a dozen of them or something. Let's do that. Starting with the gentleman who uh, presided here for a long time, and my predecessor is uh, pro tempore, Senator David Roberti. The uh, president of the Senate, uh, serving in that capacity as uh, the lieutenant governor of the state of California, Leo T. McCarthy. <laughs> uh, former state senator, Bill Campbell. <laughs> former uh, assembly member, Joe Gonzalez. Former Assemblyman and Majority Leader uh, Tom Hannigan. <laughs> uh, former Assemblyman and actually a staff member for Willie and others at different times, uh, Phil Eisenberg. <laughs> Phil. Uh, former Assemblyman, uh, also Majority Leader, Wally Karabian. Former Assemblyman, uh, now a member of the Board of Equalization, Johan Kleis. Uh, former Assemblyman, uh, Majority Leader, Speaker Pro Tem, and lots of other things, Mike Roos. Uh, former Assemblywoman, and I suspect is soon going to be in this uh, body, uh, Jackie Spear. Uh, my former seatmate, uh, currently chair of the California Democratic Party, but former senator, Art Torres. <laughs> uh, former assemblyman, also a majority leader uh, during the Enru years, uh, Jerry Waldy. Former state senator and assemblyman before that, George Zenovich. I'm informed that we've now been joined by another friend and former assemblyman, John Quimby. Uh, there may be others that have come in. Let me know if uh, there's anyone that has been missed, please. Um, If I may, I'd like to present Senate Resolution 22. If there's no objection, I'll do it uh, from the chair and ask the secretary to please read the resolution. Senate Resolution 22 by Senator Lockyer relative to the election of the President Pro Tempore. Um, colleagues, it's uh, 
remarkable for me to be passing the gavel to a member of the family, to someone who, for me, dates back to my earliest political friendships. I've known John Burton since I was a teenager, admired him during his service in the legislature and Congress. I admire him now. He uh, taught me all I know about calm and serenity, which has been a blessing. <laughs> Uh, it's ironic, uh, perhaps, uh, that we move the Senate into the 21st century under the leadership of a person who personifies the traditional values of our craft. John Burton comes from the bloodline of San Francisco politics, of a kind almost passing from the scene in an era of focus groups and spin doctors. His politics is personal, and his policy comes from the heart. So again, a new breeze, or maybe a gale, blows through the Senate. It's uh, his duty to carry us forward. It's, I suppose, our duty to harness the whirlwind. I'm honored to present uh, this resolution and would ask if there are any other members that would wish to make a comment. Senator Polanco. Mr. President, members, I rise to ask that we support the resolution and I'd like to take a brief opportunity to say a few words about Senator Burton. We all know Senator Burton is very direct. We know him to be a man of his word. And we know him to be an honest man. He has the ability to think beyond the partisanship, which is why Senator Burton has earned the respect of both Democrats and Republicans. What is amazing and what is very compelling for all of us is his commitment to the institution that we represent. He believes in fair play. He believes that the process should not be compromised for short-term political gain. But more importantly, we know Senator Burton to be a man who is very passionate in his belief that we in government have a responsibility to advocate for those who do not have a voice for the poor, the weak, and the disenfranchised. I am here today to ask that you join us in voting affirmatively to bring forth a new chapter in California's history. John comes from a family of Irish descent that has demonstrated a tremendous commitment to public service and to so social change a family that has written an important chapter in the history of our great state. For these reasons and for many others, I ask you to cast your vote, and I ask you to join us in beginning a new chapter for California's future under the leadership of Senator John Burton. I'd like to uh, acknowledge the fact that there are a number of members uh, from currently serving in the assembly who have joined us. Uh, I don't know that I can spot them all, but I at least want to make sure that uh, their leader, uh, uh, my and soon John's co-equal in uh, managing that uh, uh, sister house uh, Cruz speaker, Cruz Bustamante. Cruz. On the uh, resolution, Senator Johnston. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Mayor Brown told me that when he attended San Francisco State College, then University Now, that uh, John Burton was an outstanding basketball player. And I learned this uh, myself because running against him for the President Pro Tempore job felt like the Kings trying to keep up with the Bulls. Um, John came to play. He stepped it up a notch. He put on a full court press. He drove the lane. Oh, he finger rolled a few votes. <laughs> he forced a couple of turnovers. <laughs> and uh, I thought I was competitive until it reached about the fourth quarter. But with his transition game and his in-your-face defense, um, <laughs> he moved ahead. 
uncharacteristically, he had no technical fouls during this game. Um, and in garbage time, he really piled on the votes, uh, <laughs> Senator Green. Um, in the end, John Burton wanted it more. He deserves it. He'll be a wonderful leader for this House and this party. I congratulate him, and I want to be on your team. <laughs> a classy place. Okay, uh, if there are, uh, Senator Lee. Thank you, Mr. President and members. Today I am delighted to rise in support of this resolution in, e in the election of the new president pro tem, Senator John Burton. It's very hard for me to say when I really first met Senator Burton. However, I always remember John as an individual who was an advocate for justice, an advocate for the poor, an advocate for women, an advocate for people of color. However, in his advocacy, he always a per was a person who was very fair and was a person who called it like it was. I appreciate his honesty and his integrity throughout the years that I have known him and also throughout the years that I served with him in the assembly. I served as a member of the Rules Committee when John chaired that committee, also as a member of the Public Safety Committee when he was chair. And those were tough committees. But he was able to put his politics and his ideological thrust above and beyond what we had to do. And we did the job for the people of the state of California in a way that made sense for both sides of the House. Senator Burden is a person who you can trust, and he keeps his word. And many of us know that, and I've heard people say that throughout the last few weeks over and over and over again, that that is a quality that we want so badly, and we want people in this state to realize that elected officials are individuals who you can trust and whose word you can keep and you can rely on. And I'm very proud to join in support of this resolution and to be able to vote for Senator Burden today because I think it sends a signal to the people of this state that all of us are casting a vote for leadership, for progressive leadership, for leadership that is fair, and for leadership that really cares about all people in this state. Thank you once again, John, for giving me the opportunity to be able to vote for you today. Uh, perhaps I, before calling the roll, could acknowledge also uh, former Senator John Ferran. And the current uh, majority leader, but we're anticipating his uh, elevation soon to be the Speaker of the State Assembly, Antonio Villaragosa. Okay, if uh, all dispen if uh, debate has been dispensed with, if the secretary will please call the roll. Alpert? Aye. Ayala? Aye. Brulte? Aye. Burton? Aye. Calderon? Aye. Costa? Craven? Dills? Aye. Aye. Green? Aye. Hayden? Aye. Haynes? Aye. Hughes? Aye. Hurt? Joannison, Ross Johnson, I. Johnston, I. Carnett, I. Kelly, I. Knight, Cop, I. Lee, I. Leslie, Lewis, I. Lockyer, I. I. Maddie, I. McPherson, I. Monteith, Mountjoy, I. O'Connell, I. Peace, I. Polanco. I. Rainey, I. Rosenthal, I. Schiff, I. Scherer, 
Aye. Solis? Aye. Thompson? Aye. Vasconcelos? Aye. Aye. Watson? Wright? Right. Aye. Mr. President, ayes 32, nays 9. Ayes 32, nays 0. Congratulations, Senator, on your election. Well, I'd like to appoint an escort party, but first let me acknowledge also a former speaker with us, Speaker Kurt Pringle. Thank you, Senator. <laughs> We'd like uh, Senators Alpert, Brulte, Hughes, Johnson, Maddie, and Solis to escort the Speaker Pro Tempore to the rostrum. Oh, pardon me, Ed. Ralph has corrected me again, the President Pro Tempore. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> As the uh, Attorney General, when John Burton graduated from law school and became a Deputy Attorney General, now as a constituent of Senator Burton, I'm honored to have the opportunity to administer to him, now a distinguished public servant, the traditional oath of office. If you'll raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear? that you will support and defend the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of California against all enemies, foreign and domestic, that you will bear true faith and allegiance to the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of California, that you take this obligation freely without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion, and that you will well and faithfully discharge the duties upon which you are about to enter. I do. Congratulations. Thank you, Senator. Thank you. Hi, Ralph. Hi, Ralph. Hi, Ralph. Hi, Ralph. Hi, Ralph. First of all, uh, I'd like to introduce uh, the two most important people to me, uh, my daughter Kim, <laughs> and the man who was always described as being the nicest Burton, but I always thought he was the smartest Burton, my brother Robert, Bobby. Uh, I want to thank uh, Stanley Mosk, uh, who was my first boss uh, as uh, when he was Attorney General, and the first bumper strip that I ever had on my car 
that didn't have my brother Philip's name in it was a mosque for Attorney General back in 1958. <clears throat> uh, Hamilton Boswell, who was one of the first people who supported me, and uh, Willie, when we ran for office, uh, Willie in 1962, me in 1964, whose granddaughter was a classmate of Kim's uh, when they went to school together as little kids. And I'm, I'm just so honored and pleased that you could be here, Ham. And to Billy Lockyer, who in 1967, when I ran for the state senate in a special election that I lost by 5,011 votes, but who remembers or counts? <laughs> <laughs> and it was called in the summer when the Democrats were on vacation. Uh, and uh, who came over and stuffed envelopes and licked Dupla stickers for me, for those of you who are old enough to remember Dupla stickers, and somebody that I walked precincts for in 1973, and who I was so happy to see have this job, and now to uh, follow him is just a, a great personal pleasure and something that a lot of people in, in politics don't understand uh, what friendships and long-lasting relations could be. Uh, to those who uh, spoke for me, to Pat Johnson, who, uh, man, if you showed that kind of stuff, I'd be sitting there, you'd be sitting here. <laughs> uh, Pat. See, when you don't do this. But, but it, I said it at the time that Pat is the only person I've ever been involved in an election against that I personally liked. And, no, I mean, it's true. Other people that I ran against, I mean, they weren't friends, they weren't anything, and some I downright didn't feel good about them, but <laughs> it, it was a very, it was a very, uh, very tough thing, but I mean, we, we stayed friends during the campaign, we remained friends uh, after the campaign. Uh, to Richard Polanco, who I will uh, recommend to uh, be the majority leader when the Democrats caucus, I appreciate his kind word in his friendship since I arrived in the State Assembly a few months after his special election when I arrived the second time. Uh, to Barbara Lee, uh, we're going to miss you when you go to Congress, uh, for sure. Uh, and again, uh, to, uh, to Patrick, uh, I thank them. The people that brought, brought me up here, Dee Dee Alpert, whose vote I would have rather had than this election. To Hilda, who's been a friend and used to whine about a re-election to the Assembly and ends up elected to the Senate and in for now her second term. Uh, Teresa Hughes, uh, a dear friend of long time and not only representing herself, but, but Diane Watson, who was actually the first person to talk to me about running for this position. To Kenny Matty, who I go, there he is, I'm sorry, look at the seat. Ken Maddie's to my left. <laughs> I, I knew he was to Pat Camarota's left, which is an inside joke for some of us that, that go back. But Kenny, I've known since he first got elected, and one of the good guys and one of the old school people, and somebody that, again, uh, you know, understood how government should work. Uh, Ross Johnson who up until asset forfeiture, the only political thing we agreed about was that the Russian Revolution was a communist plot. <laughs> um, but but we, we, ha we, have a we have a kinship that defies, uh, defies description. Uh, we know the words to Big Rock Canyon M Mountain. We know the words to uh, the man who broke the bank at Monte Carlo. We enjoy the same sense of humor in sitting next to him in committees uh, as we listen to people, as we appear to listen to people testify. <laughs> um, uh, it, it's just one of, one of the true joys. And Jim Brulte, who made a blood pact with me when we both announced for the Senate that we said, whichever, I, it was my idea. I mean, I think ahead. I said, whichever one of us gets to be pro tem will take care of the other, right? not thinking it would be this guy. So, but, but as they say, and it's a wonderful thing when the great praise is you're, you're a man of your word. 
I mean, to me, I grew up, that was a given. And I think uh, it, it should still be a given. There's two people that, uh, that I want to quickly introduce, uh, actually three. One is the first person that ever worked for me in the Capitol, Grace Yee. Gracie, come on, Gracie. She'll tell you something about <laughs> eruptions. Uh, and seated next to Grace, a uh, woman who came to work for me in the State Assembly for six weeks as a key puncher back in the late 60s, stayed with me through the 70s, stayed with me in Congress, stayed with uh, Congresswoman Barbara Boxer, and now her top staff person in the state and here representing Barbara Beatrice Rogalski. <laughs> also, uh, the uh, wife of uh, one of the great senators and my best friend ever in politics, uh, Gina Moscone. Gina? There are people who should be here, but they're watching. Jesse, Bobby Crown, Philip and Sala, George, Bobby Moretti, Billy Ketchum, Gino Chappie, Alan Patti, to name a few. These are people that I serve with and that would be here uh, in person if they were not called, uh, called somewhere else. Uh, all giants uh, of uh, this legislature in their own way. I just want to say that Jess used to stand up when he was elected speaker and say there is no greater honor than being chosen by your peers to lead them. And, <laughs> and I heard it and I heard it and I heard it and it was not until, it was not until I received the votes in, in, the, in the Democratic caucus that I understood her to the best of my ability his life and success are triumphs of hope.